I really thought heading into Money in the Bank, as I alluded to on my preview show, that it was going to be really hard for this company to screw the pooch with this. You had three real marquee matches that felt like marquee matches with the Money in the Bank ladder match, John Cena versus Kevin Owens, and then the WWE World Heavyweight Championship ladder match with Ambrose and Rollins. That even though half of the card felt like a waste of time, is that there was enough there, and based off the stipulations of the matches, the performers involved in those matches, what was at stake in those matches, and a couple of cases of story heading into those matches, that it was going to be really hard for this company to screw it up. They would stumble into a good show. And as I was sitting there and watching WWE Money in the Bank 2015, I thought a lot of the performers did a really good job. A lot of the guys went out there and put forth their best effort and really did everything they could to try and deliver a worthwhile show. So this is not an indictment of anybody that actually performed in the ring for the most part on Sunday because they deserve a lot of credit. They did what they could do to make this show work. Those guys sat there and put on some really good matches, really worked hard to try and entertain the people, and I respect that and I appreciate it greatly. But as so often the case when it comes to professional wrestling, and specifically the WWE, you can sit there, contrary to what some may believe, and have 10, 15, 20 minutes of good storytelling and or great in-ring action, but if the execution at the end is terrible and the finish is a fart, it negates any of the positive progress you made throughout the night, throughout the matches, throughout the car. And when I watched Money in the Bank 2015, the ultimate feeling I came away with is frustration and annoyance. A frustration with the WWE that I really don't think that they know what the hell they're doing right now. This is a product, a brand with absolutely no identity of any kind. And also a frustration in terms of what I perceive to be a real lack of direction with anything that they're doing. And then overall just an annoyance. That with each of the big money matches that were on this card, and again, you had three of them, legitimately three big money matches. They all found a way to, even though they could really deliver, and from a match standpoint up until the end, they all really delivered. I was found a way to be incredibly annoyed with the finish of each of those three big money matches. So ultimately, I'm frustrated, I'm annoyed, and disappointed. I shouldn't be surprised. It's just more of the same. And that's really what this is. A frustrating, annoying, disappointing ass freaking show. I can understand the whole thought of not wanting to put all three of your big money marquee matches back to back to back on the card. I get that. You know, and I understand that. It's about flow of the show. It's about structuring. It's about spacing. It's about so many different things. One thing I do have a problem with, though, is that your pay-per-view is called Money in the Bank, your special event, excuse me. You know, its namesake is that Money in the Bank ladder match. And you decide to have it open the show. I get the thought process again in terms of you've got three big money marquee matches, so you want to sit there and spread the wealth. You want to sit there and make sure that they're not all running back to back. But this is money in the bank. And the one match that ties directly into the stipulation that has lent itself to the naming of the special event, you decide to kick off the show with it. That was a somewhat puzzling, if not completely and totally baffling decision to me. Now in terms of that money in the bank ladder match, once I got off the surprise of it going first and diving right into it, you know, it was, a, it was a solid match. It was a pretty good match. Have I seen better Money in the Bank ladder matches? Sure. I was in particular disappointed with the fact that he really didn't get that Shelton Benjamin holy shit type of moment from Kofi Kingston. And, and in general, this match in some ways did lack some of those holy shit type of moments. That's kind of the way I felt. But it was still a good match, and they still did some good things within the match and, you know, did try to work hard in the match to make it work. But again, as is so often the case, it doesn't really matter if the finish is crap. 
If the finish is off, it negates everything else. And this match was an example of the finish being off. Now, in terms of Sheamus winning Money in the Bank, if you remember a little while back, I did a video talking about how at that time, the only person that I envisioned that should win Money in the Bank or could win Money in the Bank was Sheamus in part because they needed to reestablish a top heel to work with some of those guys on the baby face side of Brock Lesnar, or John Cena, or Roman Reigns, or Dean Ambrose, perhaps at some point in time, Seth Rollins, or Randy Orton, God forbid. So Sheamus was a guy that fit the bill. But recently, based off of what the company had done from a creative standpoint, they had positioned themselves to a situation where they had, a, in my opinion, a more viable and intriguing alternative with Roman Reigns because you could do things with him either from the babyface or heel perspective or both or a blending of the two if you had him win this match here. But instead of having him win this match here, you throw Bray Wyatt the fuck out there. This was stupid. This is fucking dumb. It, it just to me, and the reason it's stupid and fucking dumb is not just because of the fact that the WWE half the time doesn't seem to have any vision for what they're trying to do with the Bray Wyatt character, and then they randomly throw him at somebody. Now they're randomly throwing him at somebody like Roman Reigns with a clear intention being that no matter what, they're just going to always fight against the grain, and they're going to keep Roman Reigns babyface, and that's just all the fuck there is to it. Even though, in my opinion right now, there's a lot more to be done from a positive positive standpoint from all parties involved if Roman Reigns turns heel. I don't like to do those knee-jerk reflex reactionary type of things, but seriously, there's much more intrigue and many more options there to Reigns completing a heel turn, not sitting there and fighting the grain and going with him still as a babyface, and in this case, going against a Bray Wyatt, where the whole dynamics of what they would do together would just seem to be a miss and completely off to me. And then the whole notion of Sheamus winning the money in the bank, to me, when there was a much better, and more viable, interesting, compelling alternative, you know, just made me kind of want to throw up in my mouth. In some ways, like I said, it makes sense. You've got Sheamus. He's going to be in that Ninja Turtles movie. You know, he's a guy that's a bit of a proven commodity. The WWE knows what they can kind of expect with him. He's got a certain amount of name recognition. I get all of that. But you're going back to the Breakfast Club again, basically what I imagine that. It always comes back to the Breakfast Club at the end of the day. But even the finish of it, it was just kind of a flop. It was kind of anticlimactic. And, you know, if they sit there and say, you know, that maybe that's why they put that match first was because they were going to have Sheamus win and they knew that wouldn't go over particularly well, I guess then I kind of understand it. I was hoping for more, and I kind of had my heart set on Reigns winning because, again, I thought it was a better option for all parties involved. It can work with Sheamus, and it's not the worst option for them with Sheamus. It's just... Bleh. The Divas division in WWE is completely frustrating. How could it not be frustrating? And now it just transcends into being fucking annoying. It's Paige versus Nikki Bella. Woohoo! And they're sitting there doing some raw shit at a special event where you've got all the divas watching on the TV back there. That shit, in fact, that didn't, it wasn't even raw shit. That looked like SmackDown shit to me. What the fuck was this? We're trying twin magic again. So you can sit there and either say it's freaking racist because, oh, they're Hispanic, they all look the fucking same. Or you can sit there and say it's completely and totally ridiculous because one has different hair color and bigger breasts than the other fucking one. They're just annoying. Paige is annoying. Nikki Bella is annoying. Them wrestling again is incredibly annoying. This entire Divas division it's fucking annoying as shit. Speaking of frustrating and annoying, this is what you choose to do in Ryback's first title defense on a special event? This was the annoying ass bullshit that you decided to perpetuate on the Ryback character and us as fans? If you want to have Miz going after the IC title, then just have Miz go after Ryback. Don't put Big Show in there. But if you're going to have Big Show go after Ryback in the title, then have Big Show solely go after Ryback in the freaking title. This was frustrating because the whole time, as soon as you know Miz is going on commentary, again, something you would see on a freaking Raw or SmackDown, you knew something stupid was going to freaking happen, and it was going to be a colossal, annoying waste of everybody's fucking time. And lo and behold, that's exactly what it was. 
An annoying ass waste of fucking time. Just sitting there watching and I'm like, who the fuck came up with this and who the hell thought this was a good idea in any way, shape, or form? Oftentimes the worst pressure is the pressure of expectations and having to live up to those expectations. And there's no question that after the great match they had at Elimination Chamber, there had to be at least a little bit of pressure there for Kevin Owens and John Cena in terms of having to step up to the plate and deliver, in terms of matching the expectations that were going to be had by many of the fans heading into this, trying to live up to the lofty standard of their first encounter at Elimination Chamber. And I give them a lot of credit, you know, because that could be a daunting task, trying to sit there and live up to those expectations. And up until the finish, they delivered. And in fact, in some ways, may have even exceeded my expectations. These two guys have the type of in-ring chemistry that I envisioned they could. With Kevin Owens, he can do some really good stuff that can also make John Cena look good. And on the flip side, Kevin Owens works a style that allows John Cena to slow down. And when John Cena slows down, I think he can at least be effective. What I really liked about this match up until the finish was the fact that there was actually an attempt to tell a story here, in particular a story with the John Cena character. You know, he's sitting there and having to do all of this. He can't beat Owens. He's still doing this, and he still can't beat Owens. He's getting to the point where he's griping at the ref about the speed and the accuracy of the ref's three count. You know, he's acting like a star in the NBA would. He's complaining and bitching to the refs. I can get behind that. You know, obviously this Owens guy, he doesn't know if he can beat him. He doesn't know how he can beat him. He doesn't know what else he could do to beat him. My God, an interesting, compelling story actually being told by the Cena character in a match. A novel concept. But this is the WWE. And when it comes to frustration and annoyance and ultimate disappointment, Nobody more perfectly embodies the WWE in these areas than John Cena and the character John Cena. It's just frustrating, annoying, disappointing, and ultimately always feels like a waste of time. And frankly, over the past several years, a lot of times, at least for myself, and I know I'm not the only one, when I sit there and watch WWE, I often feel like I'm wasting my freaking time. I'm often wondering why the hell I'm watching this crap. And that comes again to a John Cena match here. Hashtag LOL Cena wins. Hashtag Breakfast Club rules bitches. Hashtag Cena monster. I don't even want to talk much more about it because it deserves its own video and it will get its own video this week. The ridiculousness and the stupidity of this decision falls squarely on the shoulders of two men. That's Vince McMahon and John Cena, and yes, those two. One that's in charge of the company and calls all the shots, and one that's the top guy that calls all the shots when it comes to his own fucking character. You had so many different things you could do, even within the confines of the match and the way the story was structured with the Cena character. You had outs here. You could have sat there and had Owens pin Cena, but do it in a very questionable way in terms of the ref's three count, giving Cena some question about whether or not he actually lost, giving him something to gripe about a little bit, showing some continued vulnerabilities. God forbid you saw how the crowd actually kind of got behind Cena a little bit when he actually showed some weakness. It occasionally happens. So instead of nurturing that and cultivating that and growing that and potentially getting the crowd really behind the baby face here, we sit there and say, fuck it all. He lost two weeks ago. We got to get a total right back right here right now. Instead of doing something that could benefit all parties involved, Vince McMahon and John Cena choose to do what benefits nobody fucking involved. And the only people that think this is good are the mindless sheep that will sit there and think any of this crap is good. The only people that defend this are the ones that are so caught up in the scene of propaganda from the WWE that they think in some way this is actually good, compelling television. Newsflash! Ding dong, dumb dicks, it's fucking not! And no, it is about the finished guy, God damn it! You can sit there and have all these flips and these kicks and these incredible spots and tell this great story throughout the match, but it's just like a movie. What do you remember most? You usually remember the finish and moments here and there, but it always comes to the finish. 
And if the finish sucks, and the finish is stupid, and the finish defeats the purpose, then what the fuck does the rest of the shit matter? It's just a bunch of wasted fucking time. It'll just frustrate you and annoy you and ultimately leave you disappointed. And again, what else can John Cena's character do with this company today? The same shit he's done for a fucking decade. Just frustrate you, annoy you, and disappoint you and ultimately feel like you wasted your fucking time. It's ridiculous. Instead of doing something that benefits everybody, you do something, the predictable thing, the only thing, apparently, that you ever had in mind that benefits absolutely fucking nobody. And knowing damn good and well, that probably means that Cena wins again. What's the fucking point? Why even bother to try and throw anybody up against Cena at this point? Why even bother with the matches? Just have somebody come out and say, I want to fight you, Cena. And he says, I'm John Cena. And the other guy says, I lose. Okay, well, we got to the point. And at least you didn't waste our fucking time. At least you didn't tease us. You didn't frustrate us, annoy us, or disappoint us, because at least you were upfront and honest. And we would appreciate the time savings. And know what happened after the finish, after Cena wins, isn't good. It's more dumb shit and a waste of fucking time. Oh, Owens goes off on him. Imagine how much better this works if Owens goes over Cena, and then when Cena goes to shake his hand, saying, I don't know if I can beat him, you're the better man, then Owens says, you know what, fuck you. I beat you twice, and now I'm going to take you the fuck out. I'm going to take your manhood, too. Now you sit there, and you've got Owens frustrated because he fucking lost, and now he's doing this, so what? That way, this week or next week on Raw, John Cena can come out and pretend to sell shit, but he ain't selling a fucking thing, and it'll be like nothing fucking happened? No, this is not good booking. This is not anything that helps anybody's fucking character. And this is not an example of Kevin Owens benefiting from just working with Cena. If you believe that shit, fucking stop it. That's the type of excuse I use for fucking years just to justify Undertaker not losing at WrestleMania. In this particular case, the way you benefit the Owens character is having him beat John Cena. The way you benefit the John Cena character is by having Kevin Owens beat John Cena. So, of course, this stupid fucking company, stupid, insane idiot senile Vince, and egomaniac fucking bullshit head Cena, decide to do the shit that benefits nobody. And even the tag title match kind of embodies that frustration, annoyance, and disappointment. This is your first real special event encounter between the primetime players and the New Day. And the New Day, again, even though I don't like the type of heel faction they are, at least they're working heel. They're getting traction. The company's trying to feature them like a little something. You go out there and validate them by having them lose clean right away. Again, it's this hot shotting. It's this short shooting shit that frustrates me and annoys the piss out of me. And something like the primetime players winning... And winning the tag title should be great. It should be awesome. It should be something I celebrate. But instead, I'm just fucking flustered and annoyed all hell because I did it so fucking quickly. It's that lost art of being able to tell a story and actually be able to grab us by the heartstrings and evoke some emotions out of us. Or at least good emotions that can actually draw some money and get some eyeballs on your fucking product. And then we get to the main event. And again, these two guys went out there, Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins. They worked hard. They put in the work. They tried to tell a story. They tried to work a match in a way that you would expect these two characters with this type of story behind them and this type of issue between them for the stakes that were on the line to have. It worked. Now, at this point in time, I think in part because of my frustration and annoyance, in part because I was also trying to keep an eye on the uh, fifth game of the NBA Finals, I was starting to lose a little interest here. And I had to go back and watch the match again this morning just to sit there and see, you know, was it better than I remembered? And I think it was a little bit, like I said, in part, I think part of my problem with this match when it was going on live the first time was, I was distracted by paying attention as well to other things while at the same time annoyed and flustered and all of that crap. 
Uh, but then this match ultimately didn't send me home happy, so to speak. This match didn't do anything to alleviate my frustration, annoyance, or disappointment. It just was more of the same shit. And it just points to the lack of real direction in this company's product at this time. It's just, what the fuck are they doing? They had some things I thought they could have done within Money in the Bank to really, really begin to set the table very nicely. Not so much for Battleground, but for SummerSlam. And when I look right now, I, just, I don't see where the fuck they're trying to go with SummerSlam. And that's concerning. It's two months away. You should begin to start to see some of those seeds be planted. I don't know where the fuck they're going. I mean, and I look at the finish of this match. You know, part of the whole deal was Seth Rollins wanted to do it all on his own. And I get that. And God knows that character needed to be able to beat somebody legitimate in a somewhat legitimate way without any help to help him in his legitimacy as a champion. And, 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 and the WWE still found a way to make you question the legitimacy of Seth Rollins. Because even as the match is going on, and Ambrose is going through all this shit and doing all this crazy shit, you know, Rollins is getting the upper hand, and then towards the end, Rollins is dominating, and he's doing all of this shit to Ambrose, and for all intents and purposes, it should be a fucking wrap, and Ambrose is done. And then here's a chance to have some type of clear signature victory as champion for a heel like Seth Rollins. But even then, we still find a way to overthink it, overcomplicate it, and just kind of bullshit it. It was like we were trying to do a Dusty finish in honor of Dusty Rhodes, the American dream, if you will, baby. But we, we, we missed the mark. And I don't know when it comes to this show, and this is just might be me thinking this. Maybe a lot of people involved with the company were you know, bothered and upset by the loss of Dusty Rhodes, so their decision-making was off and bad. I, I get that, and I understand that. Ultimately, the show must go on, and that's not an excuse or a very good excuse, but I do understand it. However, man, this just perfectly encapsulated this night. You sit there, and I'm thinking to myself, Sheamus won the Money in the Bank briefcase and the opening match. Numerous times throughout this match, you've had Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose laid out. Why in the bluest of blue fucks would a Sheamus not come storming down that ramp, cash in his briefcase, and just run up the ladder and get the belt and exit stage right with the title to close the show? Why the fuck would you not do that? Doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. Or really doesn't make any sense to me as a finish. You make this deal about Seth Rollins not needing the authority, not needing any help. So then when we get to the point where it's him and Ambrose on the top of the ladder, we still find a way to do this fucking finish where you're still questioning whether or not Seth Rollins should have really won. I understand the whole thing about sometimes it's okay to have the heel go over. No, in this particular case, with all the shit he had done to Dean fucking Ambrose and how much he had dominated the tail portion of that match, Seth Rollins should have been able to have his moment, take his time, climb up the mat ladder and win, and that's the fucking matter right there. But instead, it's him and Ambrose grabbing for the belt at the same fucking time, and they fall down to the ground, and then Ambrose rolls over and Rollins is a fucking champion. What a cheap-ass, garbage-ass fucking finish. And what I really don't understand about this at this point in time is you can start to see where they're maybe planting the seeds to go with Rollins versus Triple H. I don't know if that's going to be at Survivor Series. It might come as soon as SummerSlam. Who the fuck knows? But at this point in time... How is that fucking building up to that? What would make me think that Seth Rollins in any way, shape, or form is a legitimate opponent for a guy in Triple H who, mind you, at the past couple of WrestleManias gave Daniel Bryan all he could fucking handle, beat the Icon Sting, and don't forget, beat Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 20 fucking 9. It's just ridiculous. You know, and this is why, to me, the dynamics of having Roman Reigns win and then cashing in later in the night would have set up so many things so much better because it gives you options, it gives you flexibility. Now you're going to tell me you're potentially bringing back Brock Lesnar Battleground, or, you know, sooner, in the lead up to Battleground, and you're going to send him at Seth Rollins, and I'm supposed to take this match seriously? I mean, the guy could barely fucking beat Dean Ambrose. He could barely fucking beat Dean Ambrose. It just, so much of this night fell flat. It was a night where I thought the WWE would hard, be hard-pressed to screw it up. And by God, if they didn't do everything in their fucking power to make sure they did. 
This is why it's so frustrating to be a fan. This is why I get so fucking annoyed by this company. And this is why I so often feel so disappointed with their product is because of bullshit decisions, bullshit finishes, bullshit shows like Money in the Bank 2015.